For over 30 years, we've had the privilege to live and work in this great community. Kerrigan, Estes, Rankin, McLeod, and Thompson, representing accident victims across Northwest Florida. And now, from Pensacola, Florida, it's Within Reason with Bob Kerrigan and Bill Rankin. Good evening and welcome to Within Reason, Bob Kerrigan and... We have a new policy. This is Bill Rankin. Yeah. We probably ought to schedule this so we walk in just as the thing, because we, we started disagreeing about 15 minutes ago. Well, actually, we started kind about of 30 years ago, yeah. <laughs> if it's the truth be known. But you are completely off base on the tax return issue, just completely off base. Do you want to give us your side of that? He paid what he legally owed, but he can't produce his returns because they'll embarrass him. That's probably true. Oh, okay. And and the, this prurient interest of people. Well, what about his tax returns? How much taxes did he pay? Not a prurient as, interest. As long as, as, he, didn't much do, as, long as he didn't do anything illegal, why don't you publish your tax returns? I bet the news I'm journal not, would publish them. I'm not running for public office. It's a little bit different. Well, what if, what if you were going to get an, another job, a, 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 a private sector job? They don't look at your tax I'm, returns. Well, they why could. Why is it different? Well, they could. I'm not saying that they would. Never heard of it? No, I haven't. Do we ask people to see their tax returns? But how did you change the subject from a public office seeker to a private sector And why employer? is it so different? You want somebody honest, follows the law, and competent. Yeah, but or how? Or do you want somebody who emotes all over the place and lies, <laughs> like Obama? Well, do you think, do you think Paul Ryan... Let, let me ask you this about yeah. Paul, okay? I like Paul. Yeah, I'm sure you do. So he sleeps in his office. Does that bother you? Yeah, no. <laughs> Have Let you thought think. about it? Uh, no, huh? not until you brought it up. And if you're going to go through with this scurrilous thing, you know, leave me out of it. Uh, what said... is wrong? Let me give you the line. <laughs> yeah. What would possibly be wrong with him working so hard that he has to sleep in his office? At well, times? if you wanted to, and I say, we're not saying that this happened, but if you I'm wanted... not saying anything. <laughs> okay. If, Bob if you If you wanted a complete uh, cover for some activities that you were not keen about everybody knowing about, you would just say, honey, I'm sleeping at the office tonight because you can't get into the office building at night. So it's a perfect place to be and not be. Uh, you follow me? Be innuendo. and not be. No innuendo. It's just a no, perfect, innuendo. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. mean, what you're suggesting is... It could be somehow, you know, something. It could be. Could be. Could be. I mean, how, do you sleep in your office? Yes, but I see my office during the day. I fall asleep after lunch. I think that's different. <laughs> it's a little different. But, but don't you find it unusual, really, that, he's, that he brags about that? Here's, here's the staff comes in now. Did he in brag the morning, about it or did somebody you know, else say it? He else brags about it. thinking he should be a fiscal conservative. So, he, so the staff comes in in the morning. There's dirty laundry. There's a coffee. The microwave's gone on during the night. He's got some half-eaten donuts and stuff. And his, his stuff's all over the couch. Yeah. And he's got a sign on the door that says, Do not disturb. It's the United States Congress, okay? What is going on? Do not disturb. I'm resting. He's a United States congressman. Now, he's not much of a congressman. Everybody knows that. But he is a United States congressman. Everybody okay. knows he's not much of a congressman. Oh, he's not much of a congressman. Name another congressman who put forward a sensible and comprehensive plan. First thing he's to, ever done. To, First thing. Well, it's pretty good. Well, it's like saying Michael Phelps, all he does is he can swim good. <laughs> no. Tell me something else he did. He never won a spelling bee. Come on. You know the two pieces of legislation that he is that he single-handedly got through? One was naming a, uh, a, uh, a post office building, mm. and the other was special legislation for the manufacture of arrowheads because he's a big hunter that uses mm. uh, bow and arrows. And he did that for his buddies. Has That's he done the two that pieces. much harm? 
<laughs> I mean, not like your guys who build private railroads for themselves. Okay. That's no. He, see, maybe, he's the like best a, you can hope out of Congress. They don't do anything too dangerous. He, he follows the rule of the physicians: first, do no harm. But he doesn't do anything else. Okay, he, that's your boy. He came up with the Republican plan, which really made sense. It you was know what? Much, it never got it off disparate. the ground. It never got off the ground because yeah, that was a joke. Because the a Obama joke. administration compared it to uh, social Darwinism. Well, that's pretty, that? pretty accurate. No, <laughs> it, it, all these, all these, so, all the budget increased. Yeah. How? Nobody older than fifty-five had their Medicare changed at all. I mean, there, there was nothing drastic about it. What it, about the voucher, it, the Medicare voucher plan? Well, what's your plan for Medicare? Because it's going broke. Well, quick. I, I think there's a huge problem with Medicare. But the answer isn't to cut the old people and jack up the military. He's, no, That's he's, his plan. No. Yeah, his, and Romney's the same way. Well, Romney, Romney does want to increase the military, which is bad. But the oldest people, the 55 and up, no change. The younger people. How is this gonna voucher to, everybody's plan? Everybody's going to have to have a change. How's the voucher plan going to work then? My understanding was you were going to get a voucher to buy insurance in the yeah. private sector. Yeah. That, that, well, th let's you just, don't like the private sector. No, that's <laughs> no, not you don't that. Want the, you want the government. The truth to is, we need a single payer system. Period. Don't we? Yeah, we agree we on agree, that. We agree about that's that. That's just ridiculous. What we've got now, oh, oh, all the middlemen, all the politicians, everybody uh, squeaking. Obamacare with all the politics, and you get big. It's cis. not good. Obamacare is not good. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Right. But if we had a single payer system. We would we Big. would be better than we are with this. Oh, absolutely. And, and, yeah. and you cut off all the people yeah. who are sitting there with their hands in the cash register, getting all the cash they can for themselves. In the meantime, we we reduce the quality of medical care for everybody. That's where we're going. Yeah, that's where we're going. And I was, and, right. And that right. doesn't seem it's, to be like it's it's terrible and it's expensive and it's a big mess and it's full of pork well, and don't, complex. Don't you think that Romney picking Ryan has lost? The, the older people vote in Florida? I heard they weren't not even Not if gonna, they're awake. I, <laughs> well, they may not be, but most of the Republicans are not. But yeah. my, my understanding is they're not bringing him to Florida because they're embarrassed about him. They're not going to bring him to Florida. I think it's pretty They're bold. hiding him. And I think it's pretty good. They're hiding I mean, him. All you ever hear are, are lies about the entitlements. They're going to touch your Medicare. We can't have any change to Medicare. Just tax Kerrigan and Medicare is going to be yeah. fine. That's not true. You can take all the Kerrigans and tax them to death, and you're not going to fix this entitlement problem. The entitlement problem is Medicare. The biggest one. The, yeah. Well, by far and away, uh, the projection Medicare, of Medicare. Medicaid, Social Security, and the military, and, and that's where the money goes. Yeah, that's the four. That's it. Yeah. That's the four items. Yeah. Okay. And they've got to be addressed. And what the Democrats are doing is. How do you? What do you think about the polls that show? Uh, I, even the Fox polls show uh, Romney way down right now. Disappointing. Yeah, way down. I Disappointing. Mean, I, and, and he four doesn't seem to be taking hold on anything. Of Obama. Well, let's just talk about the polls for a minute before we project Good all of the. Grief. Well, that's what the polls are suggesting now. You were, the, now. Guy, you were got, the guy that said it was going to be terrible four years ago. Right, so it hadn't been so bad in four years, right? You've done. It hasn't been so bad. It's starting to come out. What, what, the economy is starting to improve. <laughs> it's going to get rid of Guantanamo. Didn't happen. Going to get rid of earmarks. Didn't happen. Point going to end point. the optional wars. Well, that's eventually ha happening. Well, more. I think all three of those right. are points against me. They're valid. <laughs> They're valid. And, and you know, he said he he made the statement before he got into office, saying saying how that all this debt is ruinous and it's wrong. And more debt and more debt and no end in sight. And then what he does, he reduces the payroll tax, which is absolutely the wrong thing to do, which is the money supposedly going into the illusory Social Security Trust Fund. I saw Who's an that? article I, I, that... I, 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 this, skip my, my, yeah. uh, my declining memory banks here. Who's the Secretary of uh, Health and Human Services? They call it Big Sis. The syl uh, um, syllabus? No. Ah. I'm close. Yeah. yeah. I'm close. Yeah. Okay, Rats. so what about her? Well, this lady gets all by herself to decide what's in your health plan. She decides. No kidding. What do you mean she decides what's in your health plan? She, she has some discretionary authority to, to tell people what is mandatorily in your health insurance plan. Like, for example, contraception. Not only is it in there, and there's no, no uh, deductible or copay. That's free. Need some cancer drug? That'll cost you. But you know one contraceptives. The, one of the problems. We like those. We liberals just like contraceptives. One one of the problems with this discussion, 
is that nobody... Sibelius. Sibelius. One of the, one of the co uh, problems with this discussion is that nobody really understands... Besides it's unfocused. Besides it's unfocused. <laughs> but nobody really understands what is going to happen with it. And I think it is troubling to think that there's this massive change in health care. And even the materials we're getting from insurers and everything, oh. it's not clear. None of this is oh. clear. So you're going to have a lot of bureaucratic yeah. administrative decision making. Taxes are going up. That, that's not good. Well, you all, you know, the, the, the Republicans always say taxes are going up. I mean, if, if it's, it's built into the if law. If there's rain out here, they say taxes are going no, up. No, so, it, you know. it's in the law. Yeah. Your taxes are going up. Well, the ta yeah, your, your Medicare. The, the, the Medicare, Medicare tax is going up. It, There's a 3.9 percent tax on investment income if you're yeah. one of those millionaires and billionaires making over 250,000 a year for yeah. a couple. Yeah. 200,000 a year for an individual. And then there's there a slight increase in, in FICA. Is there an increase there or not? There's an I, increase I in know. Medicare. They, they it's put, they put 0. an extra 9. tax on medical devices, which, of medical course, devices. Will, won't be paid by anybody. That's just those people. Yeah. You know, <laughs> not that's the way guy, they think. No, not, not they're not going to raise the price of your prosthetic yeah. hip. Well, How far um, away is that? Well, let's go back to our debate on the public defender. You want to? You want to discuss that? If, or not? if you like. Well, I just wondered. Yeah. I wondered if you've had chance to think about the guy that the you're. The, the guy that you're the supporting. The guy who didn't vote, Bruce Miller? Yeah, that he didn't vote, and I, there doesn't appear to be an explanation for it. And I just wondered what could be the Let explanation. Let me make this point about not, not voting. voting. Yeah. It's not a crime to fail to vote. That's uh -huh. about all you need to know. I love that. That's He's okay. It's the not a crime. The Republican. I'm not a crook. The, Repub the Republican analysis is it's okay, it's not a crime. Right? That's it. That's right. the test. If it's not a crime, it's okay. Listen, you can't write anybody in. You, yeah. you, you know, you're not going to write your friend who is the dean of the FSU law school, Sandy Dialbert, the yeah. finest lawyer in the state. You can't yeah. write him in. He's not going to serve as public defender. You've got right. two choices. Yeah. You've got James Owens and you've got Bruce Miller. Okay. Those are the choices. Okay, I would just so you pick the best choice. You and I talked about that. Okay. We, yeah. did. we also talked on, on local issues. We've got several local issues today. Um, were you proud of the chicken vote? The city chicken well, vote. Well, it doesn't seem... You know, the, 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 the editorial... The editorial seems a little, I don't know what the point of it is, but, but yeah. we did learn what they finally decided about the chickens. And yeah. I think it's a reasonable balance. Don't they say something like it's crazy as a chicken with their head cut off? That's kind of what this editorial reminded me of when I read it. It's like, well, well they, they go ahead and describe what the city council did with chickens. And you can right. have only so many chickens. You can't Eight have a chickens. rooster. Eight you, chickens. Can't, you can't raise them for meat. No you rooster. Just, you just get eggs. You get eggs. No so they roosters. tried to strike a balance because it's very nice. Yeah, very nice. There are people, you know, if you got one or two chickens, Can they're I eating you bugs yeah. and they're laying eggs, and it's yeah. it's good for people who don't have a lot of money. And so you strike a balance between a chicken farm in town yeah. and just ruling it all out. All right, so here, here we are in New York, and we're talking to a major corporation about relocating their high tech industry to the city of Pensacola, and the first question that would be asked, I would imagine, by somebody like that is, do you allow chickens? Um, in oh, that's always the first question they ask. People, Good point. In people's yards. <laughs> what they might do is read the paper and say, <laughs> see what's important in the paper. Oh, yeah, yeah. chickens. And then they would say, what is the limit? Now, that would be a so point. A limit that, on chickens. A limit on chickens. I, I don't think they'd you ask about limit. taxes right away. They would want to know about chickens. But let me ask you this about the editorial, because I'm having a really hard leap on this, okay? Here's the leap. This says, this opens the door for the creation of more community gardens. What yeah, we have a, a hard time with that. What does a chicken do to a garden? I want a garden. Want you can't have a garden. There's a chicken. Okay, you can have a garden. <laughs> Here's my chicken. It seems to be kind of different. Here's my chicken. The thing you can say about gardens are, yeah. they're usually pretty quiet. Yeah, I would say that too. Because you, you have some carrots and some celery and maybe yeah. some potatoes, and you get chickens. Would you rule any any huh? vegetables out of gardens? I wouldn't. I would think about anything you could that grew up from the down of the ground would be fine. Marijuana. Okay. Well, not I wouldn't that. say no, it's no. Not, not, not that. But to have but to say that somehow allowing eight chickens per family, but by the way, let me ask you this. If you had Maybe they take the Chicken poop and put it in the gardens. Well, that's a possibility, for, and obviously it's very good fertilizer, but that's really totally irrelevant to what I was about <laughs> to say. And that is this. What if you have an apartment complex with 60 residences, okay, and the 60 all together and say, you know what, each one of us gets eight chickens. I don't, yeah, so I we think can if have you read a, the ordinance carefully, it might not allow. It says eight per Eight residence. chickens per apartment. It may, a, may be per uh, single family residence. Limits to eight, the number of chickens that can be kept at one residence. 
Okay. Uh, well, each I residence is well, in the apartment. They didn't quote it. I don't think so. Well, I'm just maybe the guy that wrote no, the there, No, you got to have pens and so much space. You can't keep chickens in an apartment. No, no, you, you have a chicken coop. I understand it. But this, this is, don't you think this is the kind of thing that maybe the chamber could have weighed in on or, or some the of the city planners? Yeah, like, time out. This whole chicken thing this doesn't seem to be the best idea. You know, uh, the point me. I thought we were making yeah, is why uh, write an editorial? They, they wrote an editorial really bashing the city council for not taking action on the important issues. So then they give this long kind of exegesis on the chicken debate. Yeah. And then they say, well, now you got that problem solved and go on to better things. They, yeah. they just found the editorial. I, I usually like their editorial stance and the way they're written, but this seemed to be perhaps a tad unfocused. The, this latest... It's a lot of nonsense on this editorial page. You can be amused by that <laughs> well, for We're going to another item while. in a second. It says, yeah. this latest evolution is the next chapter in good old-fashioned ingenuity. That's why it was good to see the government not throw up an unnecessary roadblock. Yeah. Well done, City Council. Scratch chickens off your to-do list. Now, please use the same deliberative focus to pass a city budget and hire an executive. Well, what? The well, same focus? It took them months to, 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 to sort out the chicken problem. And then, then they were all clucking and clucking but, 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 and they're not getting anything done. This is a problem that's handled at the local level. This is one, one of the few things that the national government hasn't taken over. <laughs> but wait. Well, I think it's they time. They took over light bulbs. I think it's time. Fine, fine. They got the light bulb thing straight. Now we need them to come in on the chicken problem. Let, would you like people next door to you with a bunch of chickens? I don't care. I really don't care. You don't? No. It wouldn't bother you? You can have chickens. Emily, on the morning, quack, 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 If you're nice to them, you say, nice chickens, they might give you some eggs. <laughs> now, I know a guy that raises eggs who's a great guy, but he doesn't do it in the cities out in the country where chickens belong. That's my position. Okay. On that. All right. So well, you should have gone down there and got jumped into the debate. <laughs> well, I'm not welcome. You could have worn a chicken. Dust. I'm not welcome there. And you kind of use up your political capital if you go down and raise cane. Years ago. Yeah. <laughs> well, years ago, I did. All right, now, I want to read this letter to you, and I want to get your. I love this letter. Yeah. This is my favorite letter. Bill and I are, go <laughs> Bill and I are going to sponsor or have a, 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 a contest some kind to determine the dumbest letters that have ever been sent to the editor and were published. Of course, obviously, they have to be published in the letter to the editor. So we are going to announce candidates for it from time this to time. This is a good candidate. This, this is, is candidate. the dumbest letter since the letter somebody wrote that Hurricane Katrina was obviously punishment for gays in New Orleans, yeah. missing the point that the hurricane actually hit Mississippi, which yeah. is full of churches. How about Don Caton's letter blaming WD for the salary and benefit and retirement that he's getting? How about that? That was, that, that was, that was, that was pretty, well written, though. That was well written. Okay, how about this? The cartoon by Andy Marlette showing Sheriff Morgan wearing an Olympic, Olympic medal represents a new low. Do you think every, I think everybody's probably heard the, the sheriff deal. The sheriff wears his military medals on the right side right, of his right uniform, side, yeah. which, is, which is the wrong side. Yeah. And then he's got this thing that looks like the Medal of Honor, which is actually supposedly a, it's an Airsats Maltese cross that he bought for $1,000 that he wears around his neck. And when I put in my, my, my bid on the internet for absentee voting, by the way, absentee voting is the wrong name. It's mail-in voting. You don't have to be absent. Yeah. Um, he sent me a picture of himself and a list of his achievements and that, that thing around his neck, too. Well, it reminded so, you of the significance of it. it well, it, it, made, it made, the, yeah. made the mail out a little more fun for me. Yeah. All right. So here's what they said, that it's a new low in editorial integrity by the Pensacola News Journal and Marlette. Speaking hmm. of our friend, Andy Marlette. Our favorite Our favorite cartoonist. cartoonist of all times. He totally lacks being subtle or humorous. Well, wait, just it's a second. Now, he is call. humorous, for sure. Maybe yeah. not too subtle. Well, I agree with that. <laughs> if you're going to look at political cartoons, you're yeah. not going to get a lot of subtlety. You don't want a lot of subtlety. Depicting the sheriff as being egotistic uh, and e being egotistic and guilty. The horror. And saying, the sheriff's egotistical? And He's, uh, he looks like a Christmas tree. He's got stuff all over him. He's got stars, epaulets, medals, <laughs> nice crosses. And that's not egotistical. That's no, just no. showing your picture. Can I finish doesn't. reading some of this? So maybe you had some I views. It was boring. But, okay. <laughs> did you? I didn't finish the sentence, okay? <laughs> he said, sorry. being egotistic and guilty of self adulation. Not did, him. Not him. Okay. This is nothing more than character assassination. <laughs> And Marlette is seriously lacking in good judgment and shows a severe lack of integrity that he seems to be trying to label the sheriff with 
ending the sentence with a proposition. Well, now, why, why do you think? Why do you think that this is about the mildest political cartoon? He had all his stars and stuff on, and then he had an Olympic medal. And another character in the cartoon yeah. was saying, "Well, sheriff, I don't think you're going to get away with an Olympic yeah. medal." Yeah, which <laughs> you know is a little arch. But Actually, it was, it was kind of it was obviously humorous. Yeah. And I don't think, I mean, at that time, the sheriff had pretty much taken all the licks you could take on the medal. So at that point, people were probably saying, hey, enough's enough. Yeah. Leave him alone. Yeah. You, you, you pick, yeah. picked on him enough. If anything, you probably got a little sympathy for well, it, you know? Well, uh, you know, maybe this st story went on because the sheriff never came out and said, well, you know, maybe I overshot on that stuff a little bit and I'm yeah. going to ease off. He's, he's just righteous and outraged and you know, didn't, yeah. didn't do anything wrong. And this is the right thing to do. And how could you accuse me of being unpatriotic? Or whatever. Sheriff Morgan has served our country with honor and dignity over the past four years. No, not actually. He's been a county sheriff. But anyway, Marlette owes him a public apology for this flagrant attack on the sheriff's character. But we can all doubt his forthcoming since Marlette seems to be severely lacking any character himself. He has character, but according to him, he has bad character. So he does not leave him any character. He's got bad. What, what, well, what do you think? What do you think in, in, induces people to go public with that? That kind of sentiment. One of two reasons. Either you're related to the person or you're close to getting a contract for some kind of services or benefits. That's the only reason. <laughs> the, sheriff, the sheriff has a lot of defenders. <laughs> yeah. And a lot good. of it is that same stripe, you know. Yeah. Uh, well, for example, you know, how could you have the effrontery to challenge this fine man who actually served in the Air Force like about 40% of people around here of that age? Yeah. Um, and, 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 and there was the commercial with Bud Day's wife saying, yeah. how could you possibly impugn the dignity of that a That was warrior? a great commercial. That was a terrible commercial. <laughs> the idea That's that once one. somebody has achieved a certain status. Well, how can you compare Bud Day to the guy that was a military policeman in the Air Force? We'll be right back after this. We're going to talk about this on the break. We'll be back. Stay with us. For over 30 years, we've had the privilege to live and work in this great community. Kerrigan, Estes, Rankin, McLeod, and Thompson, representing accident victims across Northwest Florida. Going back to the chicken story, just in case you're concerned about that, but Mr. Rankin had another point, which yeah. he was not doing well with when, before when, the break. When you went to the break, yeah. I just wanted to make this point, <laughs> and we've seen a couple of examples of it. Yeah. That is, where a public figure is subject to criticism and ridicule, people pop up and say, how dare you impugn the integrity of this fine... We've seen lots of examples of yes. it. The... Um, um, Commissioner Robertson, his his uh, Mr. Bear came up and said, how, you know, he's a fine. How can, he, nobody should dare question him. It wasn't a crime, and therefore you can't question him. Yes. And no crime has it. been committed. That's the Republican think standard, and they stick to it. It is. It's since Nixon. I am not a crook. If you're not a criminal, well, you could be a criminal, but if you're not but caught, but think and arrested, about the effect it's still of it. Once somebody yeah. achieves a certain status, yeah. they're immune from criticism. Is well, that a good public policy? That's not a good. Policy. I don't think so. But but you were whacking Bud Day, comparing him to the sheriff, and that was not exactly a good comparison. No, I'm, I com compared this reaction, which is when somebody gets criticized, to say okay. they're above criticism. You cannot impugn their integrity. You've got bad character. I Same mean, to you. Don't you wonder about people who write letters to the editor? Setting forth that very position that you yeah. can't criticize you the can't public because they're a good person. Yeah, so they're first public of all, officials. How do you know that? You can't know that. You just assume that. Or if by, you can't criticize public officials, who can, who you, can criticize? you criticize? Well, you can, how about people they, who sleep on the couch? Or to say, you know, now just before the election, they're impugning their. Well, that's when it's important. You want I, to decide who I, to vote for. I agree with that. Yeah, there is a lot. When of Mrs. Ryan stuff. comes to town, do you think she sleeps on the couch and he sleeps on the floor? 
I just wondered if you had a thought about any I, of this. I wouldn't know. You know, huh? this, is, this isn't good. I think even the Obama administration would not stoop to suggesting <laughs> that sleeping in the office no, is I'm to cover up something no, untoward, I'm, I'm if not she, criminal. When she comes to town, okay, or she's there, I'm asking a fair question. Does she sleep on the couch and he sleeps on the floor? That was a fair uh, you question, You might have to ask it? Mr. Studer. They didn't share that with me. Huh? Ask who? Mr. Studer. Oh, well, how, well, Mr. Studer knows that he sleeps on the couch. Well, it was in the news journal that Mr. Studer is somehow connected who, to can I say this? Mr. Who, Ryan. Who doesn't know that he sleeps on the couch? He's told no, everybody. That's the one thing everybody knows. Everybody knows that. He sleeps on the couch. But personally, are you proud of that? I just want to know kind of what... Proud of the fact that he sleeps on the couch? Yeah, right. I can kind of take it or leave it. The idea and, is he works so hard that he just he sleeps on the couch for a couple no. hours, and then I'm sure he doesn't sleep on the couch every night. And then gets and up and works again. And four, he's, a, he's a workaholic. In 14 and, years, he's passed two bills. He's named a post office and the arrow bill for his yeah. buddies in the arrow industry. And But this year, this year, as he's postured to become a candidate for vice president, he's worked on this astounding epiphany tax program that's going to save the country. Oh, well, way before anybody suggested even yeah. that Romney would win, he yeah. came out with a plan to deal with entitlements. He's the, it's the only mm -hmm. honest effort at fixing this that I've seen. The Democrats say, <laughs> you know, they just want to get elected. Just let the country go to hell after I'm elected. They're attacking your Medicare and it's social Darwinism and you better not vote for him. We're going to scare you to death and everything's going to be fine if you just tax the Kerrigans of the world, which is all total nonsense. Why do you always have to label, throw this on Because everybody me. knows you're well off. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> well, just I, I pay right at 30%, okay? I think 32, something like yeah. that. Well, we figured it out one time. You had yeah. all the taxes. Well, if you had all the taxes, if you had sales tax and all these other taxes, yeah. well over 50%. Well, when your man Obama way gets over 50%. in and you add all these taxes, it's yeah. on analysis of this, it yeah. really can go way up. Yeah. If the Bush tax cut goes away and they increase the marginal tax rate 3%, and then you're paying more taxes on your investment income. No, it's going to go up. And, yeah, uh, oh, uh, it's going when, up. we got to... Wouldn't most people agree? But Obama to pay, is supposed to save money. Why is it costing wouldn't us so much? most people agree to pay a little more in tax if we saw really substantial cuts in expenditures? Wouldn't Wouldn't most people say, "All right, you, know you can. I'll pay a little bit more, but I want to see defense be, down 25 uh, percent. Yeah. I want to see entitlements reduced. That's I want to see good major major reductions in these areas. If, Medicaid. And, and instead of this insidious bashing, you know, uh, showering tax breaks on the rich, to total falsehood. The rich are not paying their fair share. The rich are paying a bigger share than, pretty much than they ever have. The rich pay pretty much all the taxes. But if, if instead of saying that, he said, they've been carrying this load, we all are, we're all going to sacrifice, everybody's going to sacrifice, all the income levels are sacrificed, I'm going to ask these good folks to sacrifice a little more. He denigrates them. You know, you don't deserve it. You don't deserve that. You didn't do it. <laughs> you see that the Fillmore was it Fillmore? Who's it? Is it Fillmore? The the uh, oh the cartoon. cartoonist. Yeah, this morning paper he said uh, the cartoon was <laughs> you don't deserve it when the guy was getting successful, but then when his business fails, he said, oh, you but don't, you caused you, that. You did that. <laughs> you did yeah. that. How about this? That's Take this decent, idea. decent point. Let, let's say that I go to Las Vegas, something I'm not planning, and I win a whole lot of money. Good. Yeah. And do I deserve it? Uh, Probably yeah. not. I didn't really do it. I just got lucky. You got lucky. I didn't deserve any, yeah. anything for it. Well, the government Does that take mean the government share. ought to seize uh -huh. all of it, more than the usual 30 or 40 percent? No, but the government will take... Well, I oh, see, yeah. I they, see. They, yeah. Your point the is... The point is, yeah. if, if you don't deserve it, and we're telling you you don't deserve it, even though you're a small businessman and built the business up from nothing, you don't deserve it. Yeah, and that was not one of his finest <sighs> hours. It's terrible. It, it's, it's, it's a look... Right into his socialist soul. Yeah, that, that and was, it's very scary. That was to a, me. that was not the best hour for him. I think what, what he was trying to say is, as a oh, successful person, you owe it to people in your life. You owe it to your teachers. You owe it to your parents. You owe it to your neighbors. You owe it to that stranger that encouraged you and to the banker who gave you your first loan, like that, like I got from bankers and stuff, and you did. This success story is based on lots of people helping you. You didn't just. Except if you're born on third base, like you know many of the yeah. Republicans, yeah. It, it, and yeah. think you hit a triple, as they say. Well, but but most of it is that people do owe a lot to others for the success they've achieved, and I do. Therefore, pay do. more taxes. No, no, I, I mean I'm, that's the point of it. He didn't make that point. Well, I think he was saying, and I think he what he was trying to say, not very well actually, was that you should pay more taxes incrementally. 
based on the success you've had, we have we have we have progressive, a higher progressive tax. We have a progressive the bottom tax. half pays zero. That's apparently nice and fair, and the upper people pay a hell of a lot. It's great, and yeah. and I disagree with you. He wasn't making that that anodyne point. You know, we all should love our mothers, and we all had first grade teachers we love, and that helped us. Oh, that's great. So what? What's the point? What you know? What what, what public policy is that going to lead to? What he was yeah. saying is, you think you're so smart, and he was, and he was, he delivered it very well because he was passionate. You think you're so smart, you're not so smart. Other people are smart, and they're not rich. And you think you worked hard? Lots of people work hard. You didn't build but that. But don't you? You think, didn't build that. Don't you think? Some, <laughs> don't you think sometimes? That the, and now they cover every speech everybody makes. Years ago, you know, they made these mm. <clears throat> focus speeches to the groups they were talking to and hope they never got quoted. Now whatever you say gets spun around. But don't you think they design the message for the group they're talking to of to course. excite them? Of course. And when Romney's talking to the Chamber of Commerce and the most wealthy people yeah, in the that's country, a good point. he's not talking about how that's to improve point. entitlements. Have, I mean, have, you know, you watched the, have you watched it on YouTube? Watch what? What Obama said, the whole the whole clip, I don't know how long I it is. I don't know what the clip is, but I've seen the statement that he made. I mean, it made. starts with he's kind and of in I'm, shirt sleeves and he's kind of leaning it, over, pointing. It, you think you're so smart, no, you know. No, it's you, not you, good. You it's, it's, I think it was to inflame the audience and really it got caught. Like many things do when they go viral, it's like, yeah. oh my gosh, it did. I didn't mean it that way, but boy, they are, oh, that's exactly. they are cramming it down his throat. You, how could it be meant any other? Well, what has true. Obama ever done but try to s send everything the, up to and back from government? That's all he's ever done in his life. That's what he believes in. Everything ought to go to the government. You don't deserve. You got extra money? Give me that money. Here's the problem with what you said, and, and it's a good point. If we all knew that everybody's going to sacrifice, you've got to sacrifice a little more, pay a little more, the deficit will go down, our problems will go down, it's not what's going to happen. You send more money to Washington, they'll spend it on more foolish crap, more well, submarines I, I've and never, stuff. We I've never need. accepted the argument that, that m money spent foolishly in Washington is a basis for us not to pay taxes because it's the nature of the bureaucracy, it's the nature of government. It's always inefficient, it's always poorly distributed, but in the end, we have a pretty good country. We have a good interstate well, we, highway we have, system. We have a great country. I mean, we, have you, we, just, sewers, we just have we to have, accept this business yeah. about building two separate F-35 engines and, you know, the, the chosen districts and all yeah. of this crap. Kaylin Kay, Fretz has pointed this out pretty well, that each of these folks are lobbying in a very inefficient way to get stuff for their district. The Air Force right. needs a plane. And they give the contract to the wrong person. So the, the politicians, they don't care about the Air Force. They want it in their district. They don't care if all the planes fall out of the sky while they're screwing around with this. They want it in their district. I agree with that. It's I, terrible. It is terrible. And I, it certainly can be better. How, how is it possible to fix it? You have, I, what, I, hundreds, I have of lobbyists, of hundreds of lobbyists, hundreds of lobbyists for every person in Congress. Right. People in Congress are literally running for office nonstop. The second they get right. elected, they're holding a fundraiser. Especially the congressman for, the next, two for two years. Yeah. They're holding yeah. a fundraiser for the next two years. They depend on the bundled money from the lobbyist yeah. K Street or wherever it comes from. And and it takes, you know, what, millions now to, to oh. run for Congress? Yeah. Yeah. So, so how's it going to change? Here's how it's going to change. Tell me how it's going to change. First of all, we, we ignore the negative ads. And we do what's necessary to shrink the federal government. Get rid of the Department of Education, get rid of the Department of Agriculture, shrink the military, give them less to steal. How can it happen? How can you possibly put together a majority in Congress, let alone have a president that signs off on it? There's no will to do it at all. No, there isn't a will to do it. There's that's, no will. That's, we've met the enemy and it is us. Maybe it would happen if everybody believed as I did and voted as I did, but they're not going to do that. Well, we'll keep talking about it. Let's go back to the local, some yeah, local we got issues. Some good, we got some good well, local can, issues. Can I ask you about the Downtown Improvement Board? It's an old subject of ours. Sure. One of my favorite yeah, subjects. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I, I, give, give me a rough idea. of so The Downtown Improvement Board is a section downtown. It's not very big. It's no. the downtown area and some of the surrounding areas. Yeah. And it's a special taxing district where an extra two mills are paid by the people in that district. Right. We thought we were in it. We're so smart. No, we're no. not. No, no. Our buildings they just, tried to get just us in it. Outside. You know, they tried to expand it, and the voters turned it down. Good. Yeah. Well, the Downtown anyway, Improvement Board... So they, they collect, and they collect 
what, $400,000 Well, a year? from the ad valorem tax, they collect about four hundred. dollars But looking at the financial statements, they get about a million dollars, counting other, parking and other yeah, stuff, based yeah, on two funds yeah. they have in the Downtown Improvement Board, uh, Downtown Improvement District. And how much, well, let's just look at yeah. the ad valorem tax. So they, yeah. they collect around $400,000 of tax money from people that they'd rather keep in their own pockets. Right. How much is spent on staff, on themselves? Well, the, the, their financial statements indicate 230000 or something. But I know when they... Someone More than else, half. So, yeah, wait, it's obviously more than half. But I think it's way more than the reported amount, too. If you count the all of the pockets and, yeah. and, and, and benefits and everything, it's, yeah. it's not entirely easy to read these uh, statements. By the way, the audited statements, there's no audit. I mean, there's nobody expressing an opinion as an independent auditor. They just say that these statements have been reviewed for management. So that's the, the report yeah. I saw was yeah. not an audit as the, such. Yeah. So, is this the yeah. perfect government organization where they just collect a lot of money and spend it on themselves? Well, I think it's largely what the, what they do. Yeah. And I mean, the and parking, parking money is going to go somewhere. It doesn't have to go to them. The city could take over. Well, most municipalities should. take over their own parking. I mean, and that's should. just silly. Because we've got an extra out. highly paid employee, and right. we, we haven't been able to and find staff. it out. I blame you for that. Yeah. Um, who makes over a hundred thousand dollars a year? Rumor has it. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I heard yeah. heard this rumor from somebody down yeah. there that he has a car allowance I don't know or a what, car. I don't know what the perks are. He makes a hundred a year. They have five more uh, than a hundred. Five yeah. employees, maybe over a hundred paces of five employees. But here's the point, Bill. <clears throat> If you have somebody that is totally committed to downtown, now let's just say one of these super achievers, he just loves every square inch of downtown, he's walking the streets, he's working it, he's loving it, he's trying to bring festivals, et cetera, et cetera, you'd think this person would, in his own residence, would live somewhere where he's paying this extra tax. Right. Well, of course, yeah. well, surely the director lives where he pays the tax. Well, that's a problem. He, no. he, do, he doesn't actually live within the downtown improvement board area because he well, would have to pay the two mil extra yeah. tax. So he well, he lives in the city. Well, <clears throat> he's not actually... Uh, not he, in the city. We, we haven't discussed this. He's not actually in the city. But, well, he but, lives in the county. He pays county taxes. Well, well, I'd like to say that, but he's not in the county. Either. Not in the county. No. But he's in Florida. No. 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 Taxes are too high in Florida. For the head of the now, downtown. That's not, yeah, that's not you, you don't know that's necessarily the reason he lives in well, some other state, which I got to assume is Alabama. That's why everybody else goes to Alabama, okay? Because the taxes are so low. I could have the same house on Perito well, Bay. property taxes, it just Property depends. taxes. I could have the same house in Alabama. They have a, they have a state oh, yeah. income tax, yeah. too. But, but that's because they have a state income tax. They have tax. a state income tax. So, so we have somebody that doesn't even live in the area where they are taxing the daylights out of the people. If the average person knew this in this downtown improvement board, if they knew they were paying 40, more than 40 percent more city taxes, yeah. ad valorem taxes, right. I think you'd have a mass re rebellion. People would be screaming, what? I'm paying all this extra tax? For what? Because they don't get, those residents get nothing. The residents don't. The residents don't get anything out of this at all. And here's the real, here's the real dispute. The businesses are not happy with the way yeah. it's being handled. Not at all. And my understanding, get rid of it. my understanding right now, is that the, the very organization, Downtown Brim Board, is trying to move business out of downtown down to the ballpark. Right now, move the, move, move the downtown business Good grief. out of the downtown area, slide it over to the ballpark where they're doing business with their friends. Okay, I mean, then I think the downtown business people... You're going to reveal your source I for I can't reveal all no. of it right now, okay. but I, I have very reliable information that they're trying to do that. And, and so the question is... We have something that's supposed to improve downtown, and the answer is, in my view, it doesn't improve downtown. It sucks yeah. tons of the, money the out of downtown. The things they do can and nothing. should be done by the city of Pensacola. Give that money. You know? yeah. ha have the Take Downtown it. Improvement Board, the, the five people there, they're good people. Have those people make recommendations to the mayor about how all this money should be spent. Shift the parking collection. It produces a profit. Shift this parking collection thing back to the city and get get the layer and, of government out of and here. And maybe, Forget it. you know, you could Dumb have money. one or two of those people employed by the city to hey, regulate parking or something. There's and, always a need for outstanding employees. That's not the yeah. issue. So I think the employees that they have in the employment base, they might have a place for them. My objection to it, and has always been an objection to it, is that the merchants don't want it. 
they don't like it. Most of them yeah. don't. It's not productive for them. The people they're doing away with little festivals and you know the big dispute and the Christmas yeah. tree lights and yeah. all this kind yeah. of stuff. Oh, they, they couldn't. Can't. They couldn't have Christmas tree lights. They couldn't because they spent all the money on themselves. themselves. It's like, well, what kind of organization is this? It's another layer of government that should. And then be they ran out of money for the Thursday night. Uh, music right. in, and in fact, there's a bank right now that's sponsoring it, and, and apparently they don't know what's going to happen next year. Well, it needs to be rethought. And you know, just, just another thing, it might be you might. Say, what percentage of the police force do you think lives in the city of Pensacola? Now, I know it's pretty small. Twelve percent of city police officers live in the city of Pensacola. One of the great advantages for policemen for our community is that they live in your community. And it's wonderful if you think about it on your block yeah, to have a policeman yeah. that's well-trained, that understands how to do things to protect people and defend Could people. Could it be that houses on your block are a tad expensive? It, well, I'm, I'm not saying, that, well, across the street, I think on, on yeah. our street, you know, both sides of the street, we have modest homes right yeah. close by, or in fact, you know, within two houses of mine. And, but I think that police officers living in a community is really good for the community. Yeah, I think it is too, And sure. one of the problems is the taxes are so high. The taxes are high, so and people the taxes can't afford are, <laughs> all, the, all that valorum taxes are going to pay the pensions. It's a, it's a terrible irony. It is. The taxes it's, are too high because right. of pensions that benefit people that are moving out of the city. Right. And that, that's happening across then the board. When they, when they get those pension checks, they'll spend them somewhere else. Well, or they retire and leave. Yeah, yeah. and they leave area. All right, we're going to take a short break and come back with some more uh, juicy gossip that's even better than some of the stuff we've discussed. We'll be back in just a minute. For 30 years, we've had the privilege to live and work in this great community. Kerrigan, Estes, Rankin, McLeod, and Thompson, representing accident victims across Northwest Florida. Welcome back to Within Reason with Bob Kerrigan. I'm Bill Rankin, and we're going to start this last segment. We've got some great stuff. But we're going to start this last segment with, with, with something that has been a passion of Bob's for years. I mean, Bob's very public-spirited. He's, he's funded justice organizations. But this appears to me to be the one thing that just holds his interest better than anything else, and that's stop signs at Parcia 12. <laughs> We've talked about it for quite a while well, yeah. and quite frequently. Yeah. We've yeah. carefully tracked the response. Yeah. Um, we haven't gotten any. But Bob has an update on Barcia yeah. at 12. Because I know Because last time you yeah. said no. that perhaps it was divine intervention that blew a tree down at Barcia at 12. I did. In retribution for parking for, for stop signs. I, I did say that. And I don't think anybody's ruled that out. <laughs> I think. <laughs> can't disprove that. They can't disprove no. that. And the tree went down. It certainly did. And look where it went down. Right, right on that corrupt little corner. Could have gone uh, anywhere. Okay. Now. I, that's proof. By history. This was a stop sign placed at 12th and Garcia that stops about 12,000 cars a day for the benefit of about 200 that go back and forth across Gar uh, Garcia. All of the car, all of us have to stop, and our fuel is consumed in these stop signs, and we wait and stop and wait and stop and wait and stop, and nobody crosses the street. That's typical. That's, that's And that's typical. where I go home every day. I have to see that every day. Again, I refuse to go a different way because I keep thinking. Well, as the... Yeah. Going a different way wouldn't solve anything. You have to go way around. Uh, they, they, well, I could, it would be a little bit further for me, but I could do it. But I'm just concerned. You that just want to become annoyed. So, that <laughs> Well, all right, so what happened? So you have the four most powerful political people maybe in, in history on that corner because they were able to get a stop sign placed there. Yeah. And then when the, 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 uh, the investigator, Diane Max, uh, set out to conduct the investigation to determine precisely how such an absurd stop sign could be placed there. Oh, to, she likes it. She liked it well, back when she was on the city council and yeah. said it calms the traffic. Yeah, but you never calms me. I get mad okay. having to stop. But do you know what happened after she conducted the investigation? I don't know. We had signs pop up, campaign signs for Diane Mack on that corner. Now, 
This political corner, one of the most powerful political corners in the entire city, is now at war. Really? They're in combat. I didn't know that. They're in open combat. On Different that signs? Different signs for the clerk. Oh. And well, I you can't have signs for Diane Mack. She's not running for No, no, no. I'm saying one's for, one's for Mr. Ernie McGahey, McGahey and, and one's for Pam Chillers. Pam Chillers, yeah. Oh, so yeah, there's big o signs. open warfare at the most political corner in town. They are not united. Then there's going to be a I think big, since the only yeah. issue they care about yeah. is traffic at that yeah. intersection, yeah. and since the clerk has absolutely nothing to do with that, you, I you think it suggests that clerk signs. I think it suggests that there's some powerful political people that live in the area mm -hmm. on that corner. So be. you see this conflict on the signs. corner, big signs, and there's a big fight going on. So just to bring you up to date, the uh, tree comment, I, uh, you know, I could have been wrong about the tree comment. I'm not wrong about the warfare going on on Barcia uh -huh. and 12th. And I can tell you this, they're not taking that stop sign down. Once you put up a stop sign, no, just you can't like take oh, it down. oh, you can't, you take, can't it down. take it down. Anybody who votes for taking a stop sign down, oh my goodness, will will be accused of child abuse if there's ever an accident. So then, since they couldn't justify, I don't think child abuse, but but anyway, there's so, always a child involved. So, <laughs> what about the children? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, that's true. They she do. got hurt, and her child couldn't go to Bible camp. Yeah, yeah. That's, if you can throw children in, it just there's makes always it, a just makes it better. Yeah. Well, the people that were responsible for placing it there, of course don't have a real good excuse for it now because we've completely destroyed the whole underlying basis for the stop sign placement. So we are consuming all this gas, wasting all this time for what? Because after the fact, since there was no basis for it at all, Ms. Max said, we want to calm, calm the calm, traffic. Calming traffic. We're going to calm the traffic. We're all going to be so calm up here. We're going to calm the traffic going mean? by the Wisteria I mean, if Bar. You're, if, you're, if you're so inclined, you can easily get up to 60 by the time you hit the Wisteria, <laughs> unless you're turning in, you know. But if you're just going up to 12th and Fairfield, you'd get a good head of steam up there. I don't think you'd do that. After waiting, <laughs> know, nobody's going this way. God, <laughs> you You wouldn't necessarily be calm. I'll tell you a fact. I'll tell you something you don't know. That's a lot I don't I'll know. Tell you, well, no, I'll tell you something you don't know. Do you know... There's all kinds of studies that suggest where you have shade, people uh -huh. drive slower. Oh, so the that whole, calms traffic. That whole 12th Avenue corridor is all if shaded. If that theory is right, that's the calmest it's corridor the calmest. in town. It's got it's all so shade. It's so calm. You can go into a steering, have a couple of beers. You come out, everybody's calm in, calm out, calm, 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 calm. Stop it, Marcia. Yeah. Makes that, no that, sense. That, 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 didn't, no that sense. didn't make a lot of sense. It didn't make a lot of sense. Okay, now yeah. I'm going to tell you something else that didn't make a lot of sense. <laughs> There's more. There's more. <laughs> What's that? All right. Now, here's what we have. We have the community. This is the community maritime park situation. The community maritime park entered into a stadium lease, you know, for the baseball yes. team. Okay. And they gave them this bargain basement lease that's a fraction, like a half a percent of the value of the whole structure. $300,000. Well, they pay for pretty much all the power, don't they? Doesn't the lease pretty much cover the power bill? No. It doesn't? No. no oh. No. The city pays power, maintenance, and insurance. Oh. That's about $750,000 a year. And they take in about $300,000. So, so they got a problem. They need to make more money. So the person they've given the lease to said, I've got a great idea. I'll lease the facility and get a portion of the money, and I'll give you some, because you need more money, because you made a bad right. deal on the lease. Right. All right, now here's what's happening. And what, how's, the, how's the breakdown there? How much is going to the I don't CFP? know the numbers. I heard it was 75% for the person making the, the, the leasing and 25% for the, for the CMP, but well, I'm not sure about those numbers. Okay, so I haven't seen the document. That's what I heard. So here's, here's a brochure that we just got. Now, when they built this thing, it was supposed to be a multi-use oh. facility for soccer, Football right. well, and baseball. Let's go all the way back. I mean, the first drawings I saw saw there was a museum. Of course, yeah. There was UWF was heavily involved, and yes. it was retail and a promenade and all this stuff, and it included a, a baseball park. It and did. now it's a baseball park. Now it's a baseball park. So here's here's the brochure that's come out, and it's advertising in direct competition for all downtown businesses that the baseball park was supposed to stimulate downtown business. You yeah. have a point. You can make I, I, it in a minute when I finish. Uh, all, right. all right. Hold on. They're advertising for company picnics, family reunions, and other group outings, graduation parties, and wedding receptions, large televised events for sports or movies, for the sports bars, okay, marathons, parades, and community events, which is what really what it was supposed to be in the first place, this last one here, plays, concerts, and other entertainment acts, which they could have done at the amphitheater. Right, but, they have an amphitheater. Yeah, they have an amphitheater. But here's the point. 
Now downtown businesses are in direct competition with a government operated, a government funded, and a no risk capital endeavor. Yeah. And I think it's fundamentally what, I, I, wrong for yeah, downtown I, businesses. You know, if the whole thing is a good idea, and I'm getting to have my doubts, and I love the baseball team, and we really enjoy going to baseball games, but it's pretty bad for the city. What could you do down there that doesn't compete with something? I mean, the, we don't have a lot of competing baseball parks and a whole lot of double-A teams in town, but you've got a limited entertainment dollar in this community, and when, and when you go to the park, the tickets are pretty cheap, but if you go hungry and you ha do, like I do, maybe you have a couple of beers and a couple of hot dogs, no. it, it gets up there. It's pretty expensive. Well, there's no question that at a ballpark, people will eat a hot dog and drink a beer. That's fine. This is advertising... Four operating bars and a chef competing with the downtown businesses. Yeah. It was designed to help stimulate. But here's yeah. the problem, Bill, and this ought to appeal to the libertarian view. When the government competes with the private sector, it's fundamentally unfair. The private sector has risk capital. They oh, have exposure for right. losses. They have the stress of operating businesses, staffing, and whatever. And the government here, it's stress-free. Mm. The taxpayers are supporting mm. this whole operation in competition You're with local businesses. You're playing with other people's money. You think yeah. the people, and, and none of them are dumb, the people who made this lease where they were collecting not quite enough money to pay the power bill, they, they, they're not stupid. Would they have made that deal if it was their money? No. you got to think. No. no. I'm not no. going to make a deal no. like that. The argument is, of course, of, well, the person that's doing it uh, spent a lot of money to get a, the, the yeah, franchise. But if you're using your money, you'd say, yeah. so what? It's a bad deal for me. I'm, I'm negotiating not. for me. This right. is my money. Right. And you, you and we all know the debt. You're going to have uh, C.C. Alabash on, aren't you? Yes. Well, yes. CC In will, two weeks. C.C. knows this yes. uh, debt structure. But Dr. Well. Alabash is, is a professor emeritus at UWF. In other words, he's a retired professor, and, and he knows a lot about finance, and he knows an awful lot about city finance, and we're going to get into all of these issues, the, the, the port, the park, the pensions, everything, all the things that impact, seriously impact. We're not going to talk about Bar C and 12. Bob wants us to, but he's not going to be here. We'll, I'll, I'll we'll cover talk when about I come city back. Finance. When yeah. I come back, we'll cover that. The cost of the uh, yeah. stop signs. The cost of the stop. Well, the cost to, to all of us. Placing, we could, if you wanted to calm everybody in the city down, you'd have a stop sign at every cross section. Oh, we're back on this. I'm sorry. N well, no, well, you brought up, you brought it up. No, I was, that's I was, what I'm apologizing I, oh, for. Okay, yeah, because I was ready to leave that subject, yeah. but then you cranked it back up again. So, in, in any okay. event, so but the point here is this: the Community Maritime Park Board has to sit down and meet, and they have to say, what is our purpose? If this is truly a park. The government can support a park. The fact is, and we have the brochures, it was supposed to be a soccer field, a baseball field, which would yeah. be great, uh, uh, and a football field. But football yeah. field would be great for the University of West yeah, Florida. Yeah, but it's not a football field. I mean, it's a purpose-built, it's a very nice purpose-built baseball stadium, which is the trend. I mean, these multi-use stadiums no, are kind of out no, of favor. No, no, Bill, Bill, I got the brochure. Yeah. The I know, it was supposed to be. The brochure shows this very layout was going to be a multi-use field, soccer, mm -hmm. football, and baseball. Is it ideal? I don't think UWF's going to come down here and play soccer, do you? I don't know. We could have regional, I hope so. We could have regional soccer tournaments. Here's my point. If it's a park, it's a park, and the government can, <clears throat> to an extent, subsidize it. If it now has to be justified on an economic return basis, you've got to have an understanding who are we competing with well, as a government? Yeah, yeah. Because you don't, you know, parks don't make money. You don't no. build parks to make money. You don't no. justify it. Somebody has to clean it and mow the lawn and take care of it, and they basically don't bring any money. The, the public well, can go there and have a good time. It, it costs a million dollars a year to run this park, about, okay? And they only have projected revenues right now of 300000 but they, are, they have some ticket revenues and some other things that might come in later. So it could get up to 500000 They still are going to be... Still going to be losing money. They're, they're going to be losing money. So the idea is, hey, since, since we made a bad deal on the lease, or it's a poor deal, I would say, that's just subjective, but, well, we're, we're going to give the good person that we gave the lease to an opportunity to make more money by well, leasing. I'm, I'm going to ask Dr. Elabash, yeah. well, what about the fact that more people are coming downtown, more traffic, is that going to help the downtown businesses? I've heard that said. I'm not sure I believe it. Well, the first question we should ask the downtown businesses, 
are. Yeah, how's question, your business? How's your business? Are restaurants getting more traffic? Are bars and yeah. establishments, sports bars and things, are they getting more traffic? They may be. Yeah. And if they are, then the downtown what's business the capacity? people. You've got, they, they announce sellouts, the, the seats aren't all full, but they sell out a lot. And I think it's the capacity is like 4,000 people. Or somewhere. five, or whatever Something it is. Like that. a, so that's <clears throat> a lot of people coming downtown. But if the downtown businesses are deriving substantial benefit, Night yeah. after night after Good. night, that's an Good. argument for this for the government then to go on with this plan. Yeah. But if the downtown businesses are saying, just a second, we're experiencing no increase or worse, a decrease, then the point is, are you now, mm. after you've done that, going to go into competition you know, with you them? You know who would know that? Maybe who? not right this minute. Who? Dr. Har Rick Harper. Because he looks at all the tax receipts and, you know, he's, he's really good at figuring out how businesses are doing by looking at all this data that's Maybe available to him. Maybe you could ask him before uh, yeah. uh, Dr. Elabash comes if on. I get a chance. Talk to, to talk yeah. to Dr. Elabash. You know, we're, we're running out of time. We have promised to make an announcement. I don't know how much you know about the Coffee Party. This has to do with the Coffee Party USA. And the Coffee Party USA, which is a political organization, is running a contest to come up with videos and there's a uh, this is the, uh, August 15th is the official launch date we're a little bit ahead of it of this contest uh, it's, it's going to be a YouTube contest you know it's propaganda when if you're interested in this video contest at coffeepartyusa.com video contest at coffeepartyusa.com we have fulfilled this request and good we have, Co a coffee party coffee I'd party well, I, I really didn't know anything about it until I got on their website. There's a great article in Mad Magazine this month. Did I did I get your subscription to Mad Magazine? My subscription lapsed. Well, I'm so sorry. I, will, I gave Bob's subscription to Reason Magazine. He gave me a subscription to Mad Magazine. There's a message in there somewhere. I don't know what well, it is. Well, I'm so sorry. Yours lapsed. I didn't, <laughs> that's okay. The Mad Magazine that's people quite, are a little... I like, I like Mad Magazine. They're a little slack in some of their operations. <laughs> but in the recent Mad Magazine article... Uh, magazine, there's a great article comparing the candidates, and it's uh -huh. so cool. It, it has the same statement that's being made, but then how it's viewed by the opposition. Uh -huh. It is so interesting just to look at the contrast that no matter oh, what man. they say, you know, he's bringing his wife. It's because he's trying to shore up his, uh, shore up his support. He brings his wife right. <clears throat> because his wife has been estranged and now she's back together. <laughs> I mean, what, what just, it's just one, you know, it's just a split view. So I highly recommend Mad Magazine. I think it has some excellent articles. Yeah. It's, it's uh, certainly not at the Vanity Fair lab, uh, level, but it's, it's quite good. It's quite good. There's a great cartoon in this month's Man, Man Man magazine. Is amusing. This, this is the cartoon. This is really cool. We have time for this. It shows a little kid with his hands all mangled. This is the first scene. And the second scene, it shows his mother taking him by the arm. And the third scene, it shows the guy that's running the zoo. These are all takeoffs on the zoo. And it shows the guy in the zoo is talking to this guy like this, okay? Then the next scene, it shows the guy taking him over and showing him that the petting zoo sign is in front of the tiger cage. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he, the, little kid's hands are, I don't know why, it just appeals to me the man. But there's a lot of good stuff in the current Mad Magazine. I highly recommend it. Oh, and really? I'll renew your subscription. I, I, I can't believe it. That's your okay. prescription for it. I'll get it. <laughs> I'll do that. All right, so next week... You have who coming next ah, week? I'm, I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah. Um, next week, Jocelyn Evers, who's a PhD, Dr. Evers, is gonna, Evans, is going to come on and talk about, first of all, she's done some terrific work on how terrorism changed architecture. Wow. She's a professor of government. I'm sorry I got your name wrong, yeah. Dr. Evans. She's a professor of government here at UWF, and I want to talk about things like, what is populism? What's the history of populism? What's the history of liberal versus conservative? I mean, add a little depth to our, our admittedly somewhat shallow <laughs> <laughs> political mud-throwing here. Well, I'm sorry that I'll miss it. I know it'll be stimulating, but I'll watch it online. And then two weeks, yeah. I've got uh, Dr. Dr. Elibash coming up. Well, that's it for tonight, folks. Thanks very much for joining us. Within Reason, Bob and Bill, and Bill will be here next week with an interesting show about how terrorism has impacted all of us. Until next week, we'll see you then. Good night.
over 30 years, we've had the privilege to live and work in this great community. Kerrigan, Estes, Rankin, McLeod, and Thompson, representing accident victims across Northwest Florida.